feels like it's just there, just behind me. It feels like if I could just get my hand back there, I could hold it. Welcome back to episode 101. Car's in a bit of a mess at the moment because we're going deep this time. I'm going to find out where that clunk is coming from, dead or alive. Maybe not. Uh, might, might, actually, might not actually find it. But I'm going to have a good go and try and finally isolate what it is. It's driving me mad. Uh, and I feel like it's my duty to get, get to the bottom of this whatever. Um, it's back here somewhere. It's down the back of the car. I know that much. Um, I don't know where exactly. Um, but let's just dive in and find out. As I always say, you know, please click that subscribe button. Um, there's now 101 videos you should go back and watch if you've not watched them. Naughty on you. Um, they're all good. No, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them uh, I do good things and some of them I break things. Most of the early videos I break stuff. Uh, in the later videos I'm actually fixing stuff. So depending on what you like, something for everyone. Uh, anyway, let's just get in this week, see how I get on. Uh, like, subscribe, leave me some comments please. And let's just get in there. Not sure how clear it was on, on that drive, um, if I even show you that drive. But when I uh, drive around, I, it's been doing it for a little while. The There's a sort of rattling noise coming from this rear wheel. I don't know uh, what it is. I've looked before, I couldn't see anything. All the obvious things like the, the wheel nuts are done up. Um, it's not the fuel filter rattle around or anything like that. So um, I'm going to jack it up, have a look underneath, take the wheel off. Um, I think it's connected to the handbrake as I can, if I touch the handbrake cable sort of down the side of the driver's seat, I can feel the rattle. So it's connected in there somewhere. Um, and if I do, uh, if I just sort of press the brake very, very light, lightly, the uh, rattle goes away. So I, I know it's in there somewhere. I'm expecting it to be something like the handbrake shoes, something like that. Um, come loose inside the hub. It's definitely on this side. Um, so let's whip that wheel off and see what we can see. Okay, back wheel off, uh, jacked up. Um, it's tricky to see what's wrong in here. Now the only thing I can suspect is, if I can get you in there with a light, up under here. Now, notice I don't have any um, sort of the splash guards, whatever you call them, inside here, the liners. You can see my fuel pump and accumulator here. Your lamp a little bit and above there there's this condensing thing now I've known for a while that mine isn't actually connected to anything uh, it's sort of up under there and when I first heard this rattle I put some um, bubble wrap around it around this side just to try and silence it just so while I'm trying to narrow down the rattling um, I don't think that's doing its job because if I rattle this enough there, that's, that's pretty much the noise I'm hearing, I think. So I think I'm just going to remove it while I work out whether I need it. Uh, let me know if I do. Um, so that's that. I think that's probably what it is. Um, then the other stuff under here. I noticed my bump stops have completely decayed. I just picked one out and dropped on the floor. Uh, so the bump stops uh, are gone on the rear suspension. Um, this whole rear suspension needs rebuilding anyway. Um, I rebuilt the this, the uh, brakes, so it's got new brake lines, as you can see there. All of the brakes have been redone, and the calipers have been rebuilt. Um, otherwise, it's not awful under here. I mean, it's clean because I've undersealed it, but um, I really suspect that's what that rattle is. So I'm going to take that out, wait for one of you to tell me that I shouldn't take it out, and see if the rattle's gone. And there it is out, it came out pretty easily to be honest, with its magical pipe. So now we're clear, oh, no light, but it doesn't matter, um, now we're clear up there. So I'm going to put the wall back on and we'll take it for a drive and just check that the rattling has gone. Please do tell me if I need that. It wasn't connected up, so uh, there's no harm in removing it for now, but it must do something, right? Acceleration does it as well. It doesn't seem to make any difference. Well, as you heard, that made no difference. 
Um, so it isn't the expansion tank or whatever that tank thing is. It must be deeper inside. And when I lean behind my seat and f feel onto what I think is probably um, maybe something that the seatbelt connects to or something sort of around where the rear seats sit, um, I can feel it rattling there. So there's definitely something physical rattling. Uh, so I'm going to get the car up again, get it on axle stands and have a little poke around and see what else I can find in there. Now I can't tell you how long I've spent trying to find the clunking noise that's coming from this rear side. This is the driver rear side. Um, I'll play a couple of clips for it, of it so you can see what it sounds like. Uh, I've, I've talked about it to death online and in my videos I think. Um, I need to find out what it is. It, the car all seems to drive fine, but it just alarms me that there's this clunking sort of rattling noise that goes away when I lightly press the brake pedal. I mean, there must be something bad, right? There must be something connected with brakes or suspension or drivetrain. So uh, I'm gonna have another go at it. I can't, again, you know, I've spent not just hours, days and weeks looking at this, uh, which is why my videos have slowed down. Um, let's go in there live. Uh, I'm gonna take the wheel off. We'll go look at the suspension. I'm tempted to take out the shock absorber and have a look at that. I'm wondering whether it's the top mount it all seems secure at the top, but maybe it's broken inside or something. But let's just dive in there and see what happens. All right, so we're back in there. Now, I think I've looked everywhere in here. I've been around with my little hammer, you know, on everything, looking for anything that makes, like it's loose. And I don't find anything. I've literally, I've been in here probably, I don't know, 10 times, something stupid like that. I can't find a thing. So, I think we need to go a bit deeper. Uh, unfortunately, I think what I'll do is give it one more complete look over. I mean, the noise, it really sounds like it's, that it's like a pipe or something banging against the bottom of the car. And I can feel it. The weird thing is, if I put my hand on this, uh, this is the, other end of the handbrake cable. So on, on the inside, this tube that the handbrake cable comes through protrudes into the cabin. If I hold that, I can feel it tapping against it, like it's bang, bang, bang. So it's somewhere here. I mean, it just is. But that like, could be things like, I mean, it could be this suspension strut as well, just you know, equally as easily. Um, I'm gonna have one last deep dive in there just to make sure. Uh, and then we're going to start taking things apart and I think we might have to strip out this uh, this strut and just see, sort of have a look, see how it's connected up. Right, I've got no idea if this is my, uh, my clunking, but I've got that is the, um, it's the gearbox fluid return pipe, uh, just sort of taps on the inside of the uh, inside of the body, which is exactly where I'm feeling it. So I'm going to put some sort of padding around it. Um, I may steal a little bit off of the bottom of the gearbox uh, pipes here. Uh, if I can point to it for you, just up here somewhere there's some um, sort of this uh, protective foam that I could use just to stop it banging and we'll see whether that fixes the problem. Right, I've spent another 20 minutes, half an hour under there, really wobbling the exhaust like crazy. And I can see one of the heat shields is touching it a little bit. And then there's that uh, oil return pipe for the gearbox uh, that could have been tapping on the underside as well. So I've secured the, the pipeline. I've rejigged all of the heat shields so they can't move around. I've actually used like a metal zip tie to hold one of them down because there is nothing nearby to bolt it to. Um, if it proves to be a problem, I'm gonna to have to make a bracket and sort of run it across about, I don't know, six inches or so just to sort of get that secure. But it can't rattle now. So uh, I think what I should do before I try and take all of, the, all of the suspension apart and get that strut out and check that, is actually try it. Because that would be a really easy fix if that's it. I have looked at it before, I've been all over the other side and each time I look, I find something else that seems to rattle. Uh, but let's try that and just fingers crossed that's what it was.
Okay, so discussed online, and a few of you guys think that it could be the transmission banging on the cross member at the back there. My transmission mounts look like, look like they've sagged a bit. Uh, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to try and get um, some washes in underneath the mounts, just to pull it, uh, lift it up a little bit. I'm going to try to wrap up some uh, bicycle inner tube and push it in the top of the mounts, just to give it a little bit more padding. Um, got to try all of these things. Hopefully that's what it is. So let's get in there and try and get that done. Right, so I've managed to get two washes in there um, and hopefully you can see, I should have measured it beforehand, but the actual gap um, between here, now I can actually get my finger in quite easily. It's, it's a good centimetre and a bit, I guess. Right, you should be able to see the transmission mount there. What I've managed to do then is tuck two rolls of bike inner tube wrapped in uh, sort of like Gorilla Tape. Uh, in there to strengthen or sort of extend the size of the mount. Um, it looks okay, I mean, it looks a bit bodgy, but it's going to do short term. What I'm really trying to do is work out whether this is what's causing my problem. Um, if it is, then I can look at getting new, new transmission mounts. But that's where we are at the moment. But that's still rattling. What on earth is that? If I can, I'll slip it in neutral as well, and we can just confirm it isn't related to the uh, you know, drivetrain. But in neutral, I'm still doing it. We really want to try and listen where that noise is, right? Do you think it's that bolt there? I don't know, but... I could be something rattling around. That. Yeah, it's this. What? That thing I said, hold your finger on the top of it. Is it moving? It is that. If you hold it. Right, so this is going round and round and round, trying to find the clunk coming from here. Um, always trust your gut instinct. It is definitely this corner, it is definitely the suspension. Uh, the last test, I had my son sitting in the back, listening with the stethoscope to the top of the strut, and he can hear it rattling around. And then I sort of leant back with my arm, I don't know if you can see in the video, um, and I can feel it sort of, you know, the top of the strut doing this, and it's in time with the, um, the noise that we can hear. So it's time to attack that rear suspension. Now, I've been put the job off because I want to eventually do what I did with the front, which is take the entire thing out, get it all sandblasted, powder coat the necessary bits and things. Uh, the thing that's slowed me down is because my sandblaster and powder coater um, has gone offline, I can't contact him, so that's kind of stuck a, a spanner in the works. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and re-establish contact with him. Um, what I'm going to do for the now is take off that, um, or just try to undo some of this side, try and get that strut out and have a look at the damper. Um, I actually have a set of replacement dampers from an S4 um, that we can pull out and see if they're a direct substitute because if my dams are shot, I can put those back in. That's what's on the front. Uh, and incidentally, that might be why my car rides a little high. If it's got S4 dampers up the front, um, an S4 is heavier than my car. And I've got no air con, uh, obviously the air con radiator, no um, air pump and all the associated little bits. So it's a little bit lighter as well. So that might be why it rides a bit higher. Um, anyway, let's dive in. I'm gonna get the back up, hopefully for the last time on this job, Back in the air, wheel off, let's start and doing some stuff. I think it's gonna to need to soak in penetrate and oil for a while because it's gonna be all seized up. Uh, but we'll start disassembling and see where we get to. So down here, I've um, slacked off most of the nuts. Uh, a surprising number of them actually with, with no effort at all. But we need to get this long pin out down the bottom here. That's gonna be our focus for the moment. So let's get the nuts undone on the end of that. I think we we'll just try tapping it with a hammer. Right, I've managed to get the pin that far out. I'm just trying to work out how to get that last, well, the last 12 inches, I guess, because it's quite long. It's that long, all the way from here across to here. Um, but it is slowly coming out. I just could do with getting some lubrication in there. Um, if possible, but it is slowly coming out. 
Right, now that I've got the all the bolts started in the wheel arch, it's time to undo the straps on the top here. Now this probably hasn't been done for quite a long time. Um, so what I'm tempted to do is just give it a little squirt of my uh, my magical penetrating oil. Um, I know I should have done it long ago, but even when I'm just undoing them gently, it just helps that little tiny bit. I, mean, I don't want to break anything here, so that one's cracked and come undone. Here's come undone. And here's come undone, okay, so there's no, no major trauma going to happen there. I quite often get lost exactly what I show on my uh, videos and what I you know, do in the, sight, in the darkness in the, in the late of the night. Um, but just to update, what I'm trying to do is take out the pivot pin that sits at the bottom of the rear suspension. Um, they're notoriously hard to get out, now I find out. Um, initially I took the nuts off, both ends came off really easily. I tap it a little bit and it moves backs and forwards. And when I took the nut off, the rear end looked like it had been cross-threaded. So I was like, oh, okay, so the pivot pin's uh, junk anyway, so let's just whack it with a hammer and get it out. So I gave it some good wax and it came forwards uh, as far as I could get, you know, as far as I could hit. Um, then I uh, tapped it back a little bit and I, by doing that, I ruined the thread and I didn't have a nut on. And I've spent probably a day trying to file the end of the, uh, effectively the end of the bolt, the end of the thread, uh, to get the nut back on, but I can't. I just can't do it. So I've tried welding onto it and the weld snaps off. So I've tapped it all the way back the other direction <clears throat> to the cross-threaded end. And now when I look at it, it's not cross-threaded at all. The nut was cross-threaded. But the nut was probably in a softer metal, so it just stripped itself. <clears throat> the actual pivot pin thread is fine, and it just had fragments of the um, of the nut sort of you know broken off on it. So annoyingly, I didn't need to do any of this. Um, I probably could have got it out if I just put a nut on and then leave it out, uh, as people tell you to do online. So where I am at the moment <clears throat> is um, with a with a broken pivot pin because both ends now have been flared out where I've smacked it with a hammer. Um, with bits of weld on one end of it, <clears throat> which have snapped off, and I've tapped it back that way. I mean, it taps backs and forwards relatively easy. So what I did was, instead of using my small hammer, oh, I went and got a bigger hammer. So we're going to start whacking it with a bigger hammer. I'm going to use an old bolt I've got, well, a new bolt that I've not used, uh, which is hard and still. Um, I'm going to use that sort of to help give me a bit more length so I can press it further and at some point it'll just sort of fly out and fly out but it'll just start coming out a bit easier. Um, if I could could have got a nut on the end I could have um, put big washers and sort of wound it out against itself but I can't do that. Right so let's try the uh, the two kilogram hammer. Um, I'm going to use the bolt. I'm going to have to sort of get in a better position. What I really don't want to happen is it for the car to fall off the axle stands, which it shouldn't do. It's pretty secure up there, I think. Let's try. That is definitely a hammer. Alright. <laughs> yeah, it's just hitting it straight out. Um, that is a man-sized hammer. There we go. It gave up. Right, so I'll just grip on the end and see if we can actually just yank it out. Yeah, look at that. Magical. One pivot pin. Wasn't actually that stuck in there. It was my, uh, my naivety there ruined that one. Uh, it's a shame. That'll cost me 30 quid to get a replacement. Um, yeah, but anyway. Okay, now we can get the suspension strut out. Right, so I've not actually looked at this after taking that pivot pin out. I think I just leave it out. Let's give it a little, because it shouldn't be connected. Obviously, the hub's still tied on there, but the actual strut I don't think is connected at all. And you can see it's sort of dropping down now. I'm just trying to keep my fingers out of the way, which I think is probably wise. Now, there's a collection of washes in here I need to pay attention to, apparently. Let's see if we can just take one of them out. 
uh, one at a time, which is obviously where it's just going to, it'll fall on the floor now and uh, it'll be lost in a sea of confusion. So this is what I think was causing all my, my rattling. I'm going to take it up on the bench, uh, compress the string down, spring down and have a look at it and just see. But we can actually now have a proper little look in there and see what's going on. Because obviously something's not right. Um, and we'll, we can deal with that now. So that's really good. Good to get it out, good to get it apart. Work out what pieces we can replace, what needs cleaning up, all of that stuff. So I think the only thing I can do really is to take this apart and uh, just inspect it and see what's going on inside there. Uh, so I've got the clamps on, uh, I'm just sort of zipping them up now with my um, impact driver. So the important thing here is to keep it all in order. So let's disassemble it very carefully. A lot of rust. Oh, this looks okay. That's in pretty good condition, that rubber. Yeah, even the bump stop's okay. That's interesting, isn't it? A little washer there. You can see uh, well, a little bit degenerated, like it's broken down a little bit. You can probably just see that. But that's not awful. So what is it then? Well, there's not a great deal of uh, resistance back here. You can see me pushing it straight in and there's no reply. But there's nothing on that at all. So pulling out is quite stiff, but I can push that straight in. That just sits there. So I think we can conclude the damp has gone on that one, uh, which luckily I have some spare, so we might as well fit those. I think while the spring's in its uh, this state, I think we'll decollapse it, uncollapse it, and get that um, sandblasted and powder coated. Right, it's a fairly unsatisfactory uh, end to a video, I think, um, but I'm going to have to call it there because it's going to go on and on and on and on forever, this one. Um, but at least we have identified that that knocking noise is coming from that back quarter. I know it's there somewhere. I am hope it's here on this desk here now in pieces. Uh, I can't tell. But we do know that that damper is shot. So I need to replace that anyway. No problem. Um, I've wobbled everything around in that wheel arch as well. All the suspension now, the damper's out. I can actually give everything a bit more of a wobble. There's still no clunking noise. So I'm hoping that most things there are okay. Now, what I'm left with is the decision of whether to take the anti-roll bar out, get that cleaned up, powder coated, and replace the bushes on it. So there's two bushes there. Then you've got the two drop links either side, which is another four bushes. I think it comes to about, I think it's about 200 pounds in bushes, which is not too bad, it, but that'll get that whole anti-roll bar side of things sorted. And that only leaves then the control arms. There's uh, a couple of big bushes. Um, I can't name them because I don't know. Um, that need replacing, but I can do them later. Uh, that's what I'm thinking potentially. I'm going to get this done, do the shock on the other side to so get both dampers or uh, both struts done, and then get the inter roll bar done. And I might call it quits there, might reassemble and see whether Mr. Knocking has gone yet or whether I still need to bash on further. Um, nothing particularly difficult in there though, so it's, uh, I don't mind taking it all apart multiple times. Uh, I'll just see how I feel. But anyway, I'm rambling as I always do. Um, as ever, thank you for watching. Keep clicking the subscribe button, keep, keep clicking that like button, and keep leaving me comments. Uh, and I'll see you next time.